Thank you. Mr. Scarley, you did not provide the committee any written testimony. Do you wish to make an opening statement? On the advice of counsel, I will not be giving an opening statement. Do, um, I want to ask you a few questions. What, what, do you, what do you say to that signal pregnant woman who might have AIDS, no income, and she needs Daraprim in order to survive? What, what do you say to her when she has to make that choice? What do you say to her? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. You were quoted as saying on Fox 5 in New York, you were quoted as saying, if you raise prices and you don't take that cash and put it back into research, I think it's despicable. I think you should not be in the drug business. We take all of our cash, all of our extra profit, and spend it on research for these patients, for other patients who have terrible life-threatening, life-ending diseases. Did you say that? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. Do you think you've done anything wrong? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. I'd like to yield to time to uh, Congressman Gowdy of South Carolina. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is it pronounced Screlly? Yes, sir. See there, you can answer some questions. That one didn't incriminate you. I, I just want to make sure you understand it, you are welcome to answer questions, and not all of your answers are going to subject you to incrimination. Do you understand that, don't you? I intend to follow the advice of my counsel, not yours. I just want to make sure you're getting the right advice. You, you, you do know that not every disclosure can be subject to the Fifth Amendment assertion. Only those that, are reason, that, that, that you reasonably believe could be used in a criminal prosecution or could lead to other evidence. I intend to, uh, I intend to uh, uh, use the advice of my counsel, not yours. Do you also understand that you can waive your Fifth Amendment right? Um, you gave an interview to a television station in New York where, um, if I understood you correctly, you couldn't wait to come educate the members of Congress on drug pricing. And this would be a great opportunity to do it. So do, do you understand you can waive your Fifth Amendment right? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm vexed. Um, he's been willing to answer at least one question this morning. That one didn't subject him to incrimination. Um, I, I don't think he's under indictment for the subject matter of this hearing. Um, so the Fifth Amendment actually doesn't apply to answers that are not reasonably calculated to expose you to incrimination. Um, and even if it did apply, he's welcome to waive it. And I listened to his interview. Um, and, and he didn't have to be prodded to talk during that interview. He doesn't have to be prodded to tweet a whole lot or to show us his life on, on that little webcam he's got. So uh, this is a great opportunity if you want to educate the members of Congress about drug pricing or what you call the fictitious case against you, or we can even talk about the, the purchase of a, is it Wu-Tang Clan? Is that the name of the album? Name of the group? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. Uh, Mr. But Chairman, I am, I am stunned that a conversation about an album he purchased could possibly subject him to incrimination. But if well, the, the, gentleman, the gentleman is correct. We, we, I, I understand that Mr. Scarelli is under indictment, but it is not the intention to ask him questions about that topic. So if I understand it correctly, he... We're not going to ask him questions that are going to uh, be in the subject matter of his current pending criminal charges. Um, and if we were to get close to one or in the gray area, he's welcome to assert his Fifth Amendment privilege there. And if we stay away from the subject matter of his indictment, he is, uh, some could argue, has a legal obligation to answer um, under 
uh, Kaskar versus the United States, but certainly has the right to do so, as he did in the, in the television interview and as he uh, does quite frequently on social media. Mr. Correct. Chairman, I'm trying to. Mr. Chairman, may I be recognized for a moment? No. No, you, you will not. The, no, you're not allowed to. Under, under the House rules, you have not been sworn in. I understand, but he's making no, a Ms. argument the, to you are not recognized. Not you are not recognized, and you will be seated. Um, the gentleman from South Carolina is, is correct. Uh, we were trying to provide an opportunity to have a candid discussion about issues related to drug pricing. Um, we now recognize uh, Mr. Cummings for any questions he might have. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me say for the record that I completely support uh, your decision to, to bring Mr. Raleigh to make sure that he is, that he asserted his uh, Fifth Amendment right before this committee. Uh, normally, Democrats on our committee have accepted the uh, assertions of a witness's attorney that his or her client is going to take the Fifth. But in this case, Mr. Shirelli made a number of public comments himself, raising legitimate questions about his intentions. Honestly, I did not know whether he was even going to show up today, so it is nice to see you. But now that he has invoked his constitutional rights, of course I re will respect his decision. To Mr. Shirelli, since I have you in front of me, after trying to get you in front of this committee for so long, let me say this. I want to ask you to, no, I want to plead with you to use any remaining influence you have over your former company to press them to lower the price of these drugs. You can look away if you like, but I wish you could see the faces of people, no matter what Ms. Redslaff says, who cannot get the drugs that they need. And by the way, it's the taxpayers. Somebody's paying for these drugs. Somebody's paying. It's the taxpayers that end up paying for some of them. And so, and those are our constituents. People's lives are at stake because of the price increases you impose and the access, the access problems that have been created. You are in a unique position. You really are, sir. Rightly or wrongly, you have been viewed as the so-called bad boy of pharma. You have a spotlight and you have a platform. You could use that attention to come clean to right your wrongs and to become one of the most effective patient advocates in the country and one that can make a big difference in so many people's lives. I know you are smiling, but I am very serious, sir. The way I see it, you can go down in history as the poster boy for greedy drug company executives, or you can change the system. Yeah, you. You have detailed the knowledge about drug companies and the system we have today. And I truly believe, I truly believe, are you listening? Yes. Thank you. I truly believe you could become a force of tremendous good. Of course, you can ignore this if you like. But all I ask is that you reflect on it. No, I don't ask, Mr. Shirelli. I beg that you reflect on it. There are so many people that could use your help. May God bless you. Thank you. I can go back. Chairman yields back. Mr. Shirelli, it, it is uh, it's your intention to decline all answers to the questions and invoke your Fifth Amendment right? Yes. Given that the witness has indicated that he does not intend to answer any questions and out of respect for his constitutional rights, I ask now that the committee excuse the witness from the table without, without objection, so ordered. We will pause for a moment as Mr. Screlly is escorted out.